Welcome back and for today's video I'm going to be teaching you step by step on how to make this beautiful garden trellis out of, you guessed it, fence pickets. So one of the first build videos that I posted was actually of a garden trellis obelisk, obelisk, I think it's obelisk. I think I was corrected because I think I was calling it an obelisk before. I can't remember so I'm going to call it either one probably throughout the whole video. But one of the first builds that I did was a garden trellis or obelisk and everyone really liked that build so I decided to design a new one that was a little bit more decorative but still easy to build and out of affordable material and this is what I came up with let me teach you how I built it so as always I will be teaching you step by step on how to build this obelisk obelisk whatever you want to call it but if you're a plans in the hand type of person just head over to the website I'll throw a link in the description so for this build I'm going to be using fence pickets you can actually use any type of material that you want as long as you get the dimensions of the parts that we're about to cut or for some reason if you'd like a taller version that's all that you would have to do is add extra length to the legs but we'll get to those here in a bit let's go ahead and get these parts cut so the first thing that I'm going to do is cut the parts for my legs and before I actually start ripping these boards down to the width I'm going to go ahead and put my angles on the ends so for the legs, we're going to be using the full length of the board. And we'll be cutting four that are two and a half inches wide and four that are two inches wide. And the reason why I'm putting the angles on first before I rip them down, because I'm going to be cutting these with a circular saw. Now there's several different ways that you can actually cut this angle. You can use the miter jig that I covered in my last tips and tricks video, or you can use a table saw jig. But for this video, I'm going to be making the cut using the simplest form of those tools, just to show you that essentially this entire build can be done with a circular saw. So to start with, I'm going to be cutting my four legs that are two and a half inches wide. So in order to get the angle that we need, which is 10 degrees, I'm going to start off by measuring from the end of the picket with the dog ears, 14 and 3 sixteenths of an inch back and make a mark on the edge of the board. Then from the top of the board, I'm going to measure two and three eighths of an inch and bring that mark to the end of the board. And then use a straight edge to connect the two, leaving you with your cut line. You can freehand this cut if you'd like, or you can use a guide board. Once you make your first cut, you'll just flip the board over and repeat this process. So now that we've made those cuts for the two and a half inch legs, let's put our angles on the boards that we're going to be using for our two inch legs. So for the two inch legs, we're going to start by measuring 11 and 5 sixteenths of an inch back and make that mark on the outer edge. And then on the end of the boards, we'll make our mark at an inch and seven eighths. Then we'll just repeat the steps that we did for our two and a half inch legs. So now that we have our 10 degree angles cut, let's head over to the table saw and rip these down to size. And a special shout out to the Patreon community for helping make this channel possible. We have behind the scenes content, early access, the plan of the month, and now community chats that allow us to share our pictures and builds, inspire and bounce ideas off of each other. If this sounds like the type of community that you would be interested in, I'll make sure to throw a link on my website and in the description. Okay, so now that we have our leg boards ripped down to size, we have one last step to do, and that's to put the angles on the ends. Let's go ahead and get that knocked out. So for each one of our leg boards, we want our angle facing out. And then on the opposite side, we're going to set our saw to 10 degrees to the left. Then we'll make a 10 degree cut starting at our inside corner. So now that we have our legs completed, let's go ahead and make our four bottom boards that we need. These boards are used to connect our two legs. The bottom support boards will be cut out of two inch material, have a 40 degree angle on each end, and measuring from tip to tip, we'll need two that are 19 and 13 sixteenths of an inch long to be used with our two and a half inch legs. And then we'll need two that are 18 and 13 sixteenths of an inch long to be used with our two inch legs. Then for the rest of the parts, we'll be needing one inch strips. I'm going to start by cutting our four slat supports that are 62 and 7 eighths inch long. And this is where those two pieces of scrap from our legs will come into play. Okay, so now with our slat supports cut, let's go ahead and cut our slats. Again, we're going to be using one inch material. So there are six different size slats and we're going to be needing eight of each. The slats will have a 40 degree angle on each side and measure 15 inches, 13 inches, 11 inches, 9 and a half inches, seven and a half inches and five and a half inches. So since these are parts that we are going to be making repetitive cuts of, make sure to cut some extra material to use as a jig. Just start off by cutting one size of each length, mark it as your jig, and then use these for the rest of your cuts. This will save you a ton of time in the long run. All right, so with all of our slats cut, there's only one more part that you're going to need. I just used some scrap from our two and a half inch material, 
made four blocks that are two and a half by two and a half. You'll see where I'll use these here in a minute. So with all of our parts cut to length, there's just two more things that we have to do before we can assemble all of these panels. And that's gonna be installing pocket holes on one end of our slat support boards and pocket holes on both sides of our bottom brace boards. So with the bit collar set at one half of an inch, we will install a single pocket hole in the center of one end of each of our slat support boards. And for our bottom brace boards, we'll install two pocket holes in each end. So now it's time to assemble each one of these panels. And regardless of whether we're doing the two inch or the two and a half inch, the assembly is gonna be the exact same. So to start with, you're gonna need a flat surface, a flat square edge for your bottom, two matching leg boards, a bottom board, your center slat board with the pocket hole facing down, and then two of each one of your slat sizes. So we're going to start off by laying our two legs out with the angles in, with our center slat board in between. The bottoms of our legs should be flush against our flat edge. The top of the center board should be even with the legs. Keep in mind that the outsides of the boards are what will be facing up on your table. So anything that is facing down will end up being the front of the panel. And just to make things a bit easier, once you have these three boards in place, just throw a temporary clamp on the end. So with those in place, let's go ahead and install our bottom bracket with the pocket hose facing up. And for this, I'll be using wood glue and one inch pocket hose screws. And to install the bottom board, I'm just gonna move it up until it touches the bottom of the center board. And then I'm gonna attach my center board to the center of my bottom brace. So now that the bottom board is installed and holding everything into place, let's go ahead and glue up our top. I'm just gonna add glue to all of the edges. And then this is where the two and a half inch by two and a half inch board comes into play. I'm gonna add wood glue to the back, measure seven and a half inches down from the top, and then install this in the center using seven eighths inch bread nails. Once that's in place, I'll go ahead and throw a bread nail on each end. All right. So that is essentially the frame of our panel. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna start off just by roughly laying them out into place. So before we actually install any of these, the spacing is gonna be from the bottom of our center board to the point of the slat is gonna be eight inches. And then every set going all the way up will be eight inches from the bottom of the previous angle to the top of the next point. So instead of having to measure all of these, I actually made a little jig for that. It's a one inch wide board like our center board that is five and one quarter of an inch long and then a 40 degree angle on each side. So if you make one of these, after you install your first board, it's gonna make the rest of these piece of pie. So you can either make one for yourself, or if you're following the plans, I actually made a cutout template make it a little easier. But all of that spacing is gonna go off of our very first set. It's kind of like a starter board. So I'm actually gonna measure up eight inches from the top of the top board and make a little mark. Then I can line up the tip of my first slats with that mark. And I can even use my jig, line it up perfectly with my slat board and it'll make sure that my angle is square. So let's go ahead and get this one installed and work our way up. I'll actually be using the spacer board to determine where I need to put my wood glue. It's gonna go right above that angle. So the spacer board goes against the top of your first one. And then we're just gonna follow that angle, make sure that it's perfectly square with the center board and the tip is centered and install. And we'll just wipe off any squeeze out and your first panel is done. And we're gonna assemble the next three panels the exact same way. All right, so now we have two done, two more to go. I'll throw those together and we'll finish this up. So now that we have all four panels made, I'm gonna take the two inch panels, set those aside, and then with the two and a half inch sides of my work surface, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out where I'm gonna be placing my screws. Since the two inch sides will actually be sitting inside of the two and a half inch sides, we will only be installing screws on the two and a half inch outer legs. For mine, I'll be placing a screw at two inches, 12 inches, 24 inches, 36 inches, 48 inches, 60 inches, and then 70 inches. And at each of those measurements, I'll be placing my screw a quarter of an inch from the outside edge. Well, instead of using a pencil to mark this screw placement, use something with a sharp point, even something as simple as a nail. But what you're doing is creating a divot in the wood that later we'll use as a drill bit starter. So now that we have all of our screw placement lined out, it's time to start putting this baby together. So I'm gonna start off with a two and a half inch panel and a two inch panel. The two inch panel will actually line up on the outside edge of the two and a half. And it'll look something like this. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this section together, then we can add the other panels. 
And to help hold these two pieces into place while I pre-drill and place my screws, I'm just gonna put a squeeze clamp at the top. As I work my way down, I'll make sure that the outside edges are all flush. And once you get that done, you just keep working your way around. Now, if you're not planning on ever taking this apart, I'd be putting exterior wood glue and brad nails on each one of these sides just to help hold everything together. But for mine, at the end of the season, I want to be able to take it apart, lay it flat, and store it away. So I'm only gonna be using one and a half inch exterior screws. And once everything is put together, if you wanna add a little shape to the top, just use a sander. And that's all that there is to it. We have taken fence pickets and turned them into a beautiful garden obelisk, obelisk. So now it's your turn. So get up, get out, and go create something.